Which of the following statements is true of a body that has uniform velocity? Uniform velocity means it would have zero acceleration, and uniform velocity would mean that the change in displacement over the change in time would remain equal. So it's rate of change of position displacement remains constant. That seems reasonable. Its position changes with increasing amounts. No, it needs to stay the same, uniform. Its acceleration increases definitely not. Uniform velocity means there is no acceleration. And its rate of change of velocity remains constant with time. And that is what would be if we were looking for constant acceleration. So A is the correct answer. The vector sum of two forces of magnitude, 3 plus 4, is equal to 7. Or you could say that one was in the opposite direction. That would be if they were in the same direction. If they were in the opposite direction, you'd subtract and you'd get 1 newton. Remember, the angle between them here is 0 degrees, same direction. Here it's 180 degrees, opposite directions. And therefore, it could be any value between 1 and 7. Two resistors are 12 and 24 ohms respectively, and they're connected in parallel to a 12-volt battery. Which of the following is correct? The current in the 12 ohm is greater than the 24 ohm. That is 100% correct. Why? Current is lazy. So more current, let's say we happen to have um, 3 amps coming along here. One of the amps would go the hard route, and two of the amps would go the easier route. The potential difference across these two would be exactly the same. You will remember that the potential difference across one branch is exactly the same as the potential difference across the next branch, which is the same as the potential difference across the entire parallel network. The current in the 24 ohm resistor is greater than the 12 ohm resistor. That is not true, it's the other way around. And the potential difference across the 24 ohm resistor is greater. We've just decided that those are the same. So the only right answer is A. In the current below, three bulbs are connected in series with the battery. Which one of the following switches would be closed to make L glow the brightest? So we want as few light bulbs as possible going. So um, let's see what's going to happen over here. If I were to switch, close switch one, switch one, I would find that my current would be able to go along here through L1, along, through L2, let's call that 2, and here it would try and sneaky puff over there because that would be easier. If I were to close just S2, what would happen is the current would come along, go over here, go there, and then bypass and come back home like that. Um because that would be a whole lot easier. And if I were to close S3, the current would come along and move here, but it would bypass L1 altogether, so that's not helpful at all. It looks like that would be my correct answer, and if I open S, at least close S3 again, I'm going to bypass, so that's definitely wrong as well. Um, and then S1 means that I'm, I've still got a second light bulb in the circuit over there, whilst the only circuit that I only, if I close S2, the only light bulb that would get any light would be L. So B is your correct answer. A battery with an EMF and an internal resistance is connected to a resistor as shown. A second resistor with the same resistance is now connected in parallel with resistor R. That will decrease the resistance overall of the circuit. How will the voltmeter and the ammeter readings change? Well, if I've decreased the resistance, the ammeter reading is going to increase because I have I made the circuit easier. What happens to the voltmeter reading now? I am going to be using less energy to go through this network than I was previously, so I'm going to decrease my voltmeter reading as well. If you use real values, you will be able to see that it will come out. A piece of rock with a mass of 10 kilograms is dropped from rest on a planet called Lisa. It attains a velocity of 4 meters per second in 0, 0,5 seconds. What is the weight on the, of the rock on, sorry, that should really be Lisa, 
on this planet and what we find is that I can work out their acceleration V is equal to U plus AT four is equal to starts at zero plus zero comma five T and therefore sorry zero comma five A and therefore A turns out to be equal to eight meters per second. If I now squared sorry and if I now say weight is equal to mass times gravitational acceleration, I have 10 times by 8, and I land up with 80 newtons. What is the formula of ammonium carbonate? NH, NH4 is ammonium, and you need to know that now. Carbonate is CO3. Ammonium has a valency of 1, carbonate 2. And we hold hands and we land up with two ammoniums and one carbonate. D is my right answer. The concentration of a solution containing that mass of calcium carbonate in that volume is going to be number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass. 0, 0,1. The molar mass of calcium carbonate is 40 plus 12 plus 48. So that comes out to be 100. And therefore, you land up with 0, 0,001 moles. Now, you are going to divide that by, this is 1 decimeter cubed. So, concentration equals number of moles divided by volume. 0, 0,001 divided by 1. And I land up with um, 0, 0,001 moles per cubic decimeter. In which of the following solutions will the concentration of the sodium ions be the smallest? So I have got 0, 0,25 of sodium and there's only one ion each time. So here the sodium bicarbonate to sodium ratio is 1 is to 1. So sodium ions is 0, 0,25. Here I've got two sodiums, so it's going to be two sodium is one is two, two, which means I need to double zero comma one five, I get zero comma three. One is to two, because there's two sodiums in every sodium sulfate, double zero comma one eight, and I get zero comma three six. Sorry, that's a two. One is to two again over here. 0, 0,25 doubled is 0, 0,5. So the lowest concentration is D. The graph below in represents the fraction of particles against kinetic energy. Fraction of particles, kinetic energy, of an identical sample of reacting particles at two different temperatures. Which of the following statements is true? Well, the first thing is we need to think about this. T1 has lots with very few, very little kinetic energy. That must be a low temperature because they don't have a lot of kinetic energy. This sample of 2 has got more particles with a higher kinetic energy. So we are going to say that that is a higher temperature. So T2 is greater than T1. That has to be one of the choices. And um, so that would be either B or C. And area X represents the fraction of particles having sufficient energy to react. Well, that's the number of particles that have enough energy above activation energy. So that is true. B is my right answer. Car train travels at 140 kilometers per hour, converted to meters per second, my favorite question, 140 kilometers per one hour is equal to 140,000, oopsie, sorry, meters per 3,600 seconds, and you get 38,89 meters per second. Then it says, Linda is on the train traveling from Santon to OR Tambo Airport. 
towards the east. If she walks towards the back of the train, in other words, that would be towards the west, because she's going backwards, at 2 meters per second, what is her velocity relative to the ground? Well, the train is going at 38,89 to the east. She is going 2 to the west, and therefore relative to the ground, her resultant is going to be 36,89 meters per second to the east. It is a velocity, it must have a direction.